This evening for our remote viewing project, you will want to pay very close attention to each and every session. The division of effort is phenomenal and paints an incredible story of something that may be coming to every single one of us in the very near future. I'm joined with Daz Smith, Edward Reardon, Naeem, and Dick Allgaier. We're getting ready to break down our remote viewing project here. Starting with Daz, I just want to do a quick check-in, your thoughts on this project, Daz. I don't know. <laughs> I would have to remember what I did. Uh, oh, here we it's go. It's amazing. <laughs> yes, it is amazing, Daz. Thank you get a gold star tonight. Thank you. Sorry. Love it. Did that mysterious introduction, and Daz comes back with, uh. <laughs> Way to keep the mystery going, Daz. All right, Edward, reaction to your project. This is was one of those sessions. Um, yes. Very intense there were, there were a few moments in there that were, were pretty intense for me uh, inside of a session. So uh, I'm looking forward to seeing yeah. what the other guys got. I'm looking forward to finding out what this is. Um, something pretty intense. Yeah, yeah, for sure. I agree. Naeem? Some pretty uh, exotic technology type stuff I got. I mean, hopefully we're on the right track with this one. If my data is on target some science fiction type stuff that uh would be really interesting i kind of hope you're not on the right track honestly naeem after looking at everybody's data and dick interesting you said this could be coming to all of us because as i addressed this target id the first thing i sat down before i even did the session i went this is everybody's going to have to do this like it, some people are going to willingly do it and some people yeah. are going to be almost like tied up and made to do it. And I think I have good data because the way it came to me, I, I, I couldn't tell you what this target is. I mean, if you said call target for a million dollars, I go, man, I don't know. But the the quality of a lot of the stuff that came to me has that quality. I know from <clears throat> 27 years of remote viewing, like that's good. Mm -hmm. so i know yeah. there's some good data in my session but i don't understand it yeah you guys all had great data the over it overlapped at the right points but you're all very uh diversified in what you focused on with your data it all fits together but it's everything's very diverse and when you see what the bigger picture is and i spent a lot of time on this and now I, I must have done this analysis i think two or three times just to go back and looking at it from different angles and trying to capture everything. And once you see everything fit together, at least I think the story that it tells is, is you guys did you guys did some great remote viewing here. So let's go into uh, your sessions here. I'd like to start with Daz. E excellent presentation on that one. So Daz, you saw some of your work in my work and my work in your work. And Edward, we had kind of some of the same stuff. Uh, yes, Interesting. I have no idea what that was, but it was intense. Yeah, yeah. It, it, it was like uh, Daz and I were trying to explain the same thing like this uh, data field that compresses to a point mm -hmm. and then edward and i the interface with human that changes humans uh in a significant way can you talk to me about that a little bit dick with that with that at least that experience is like seeing these humans changed well the idea uh i didn't really understand it was like hey we're making this thing that'll make you perceive differently or let you process data better and then we'll upgrade it and then we'll upgrade it. And it, it, it just like advances so quickly mm -hmm. that it becomes something that just becomes part of the human interface. It was a great session, Dick, by all of you. You all had great work. Um, like I said, the division of effort was great. I know we're all chomping at the bit to see what this project is. So I'm going to share it with us now. Uh, take a minute to process what the target was, and then I'll, I'll go through the presentation with some feedback and then the analysis here. Because what we're looking at is the projected future of virtual reality in the year 2050, which is that's less it. than 25 years yeah, away. That's it. That's what I was seeing in that session. Yeah. This was massive. This goes beyond a headset. Um, this is what it sounds like, fully immersive transference of consciousness into really parallel universes, I would think, with the creation of some kind of other 
realm for your consciousness with VR. So let's let's talk about this a little bit. Unless somebody has a reaction before I even go into the the feedback. Anybody want to say anything? Good name. Makes makes uh makes makes a lot more sense now. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it sure does. That's exactly what I was going to say. Yeah. All right. So what were your sub cues? The remote viewer is to view and describe the metaverse and parallel virtual spaces being used in 2050. The remote viewer is to observe the mass population dynamics within this space and how they interact differently than the people of today. This reminds me of a handful of movies that I've seen, sci-fi movies, over the last few years for sure. All right, so we have Meta's Metaverse is one of the leading market standards today. You can see you have the headset here. You put it on. Um, I have the Quest, I think the first or second iteration of it. I don't use it often, but just over the weekend I was on it before I did the analysis. And and it's pretty fascinating. I mean, you walk around in this virtual world, you meet people, just like you're in a social gathering. People are having conversations. The closer you get to them, you can hear the conversations. There's different places you can go to, like different portals. You literally step into a portal and you're in another realm. And you can go watch music concerts. You can go watch stand-up comedy. You can meet people. You can play games. I mean, it's a whole other universe right now. Obviously, we're still just wearing a headset, so it's immersive, tricking some of your senses, but you still know that you're sitting in your living room. All right, so let's take a look at our analysis. And when I first started going through this, especially when I looked at Dick's session with his glasses, I was reminded of a quote by David Icke in 2013 from his book, The Perception Deception. He said, the plan is to move humanity from handheld technology to wearable technology and to implanted technology step by step so people accept each stage as normal. I remember in 2013 hearing that being like, okay, yeah, that's that's weird. Uh, I can see it going that way, but it seems like we're pretty close to that right now. Some quotes from Ray Kurzweil. Uh, he's, out, he's an engineer out of Google. He's a futurist. Talking about consciousness and life extension. We'll be able to transfer the patterns of our minds, including our memories and skills, to more advanced, more resilient, non-biological material. Our thinking will be a hybrid of biological and non-biological thinking. All right, this was a massive one. It was a lot of data to go through to piece things together. Obviously, it's open to interpretation. I'm going to run through the team. Uh, Edward, starting with you, you're at the top of my screen right now, and get your feedback on this project. Whew, man, that was a big one. Yeah, yeah <laughs> it was. Take, take a little little time to uh, to chew on that one. Yeah, for uh, sure. That's, we're talking 25 years from now. Uh, that was the target date. Um so who knows, by then, uh, virtual reality could be injectable um, like that. And uh, the person could probably just close their eyes and, and be in an immersive space like that. Yeah. And um, experience, uh, you know, like, like uh, what, what was in the session. Um, you know, I was thinking that, uh, you know, like, the the harsh environments and the the space and all that you know mm -hmm. space travel and all that kind of stuff that that i was thinking about that like that could be the virtual reality thing you could be 100%. in a toxic environment you could be in the depths middle of space you could be on mars be on the moon be in the middle yes. of the sun uh inside of a nuclear explosion uh, everything you can do you can be wherever wherever you want yeah um, and and the avatars Right with the robots that were being totally. described, you yeah, can pick totally. anybody you want. It's uh, it's crazy. It's crazy. Um, yeah, to think that we're that we're that close to that. So yeah, yeah. We I mean, and we're here. I mean, you can go get a, a VR headset at Best Buy right now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. we're very close for sure. Okay, yeah. Edward, thanks for sharing your thoughts. Naeem, your reaction? Yeah, that was a good one. Uh, my before you unveiled the target i was saying this felt like it goes into some very sci-fi uh you know deep sci-fi stuff and i mean definitely uh we did rick Kurzweil a while back we did him at the target but um you know he talks about the singularity and mm -hmm. you know uh like you mentioned the debrief um i mean i don't like that idea so much um, the idea of putting our, our brains into a into a robot or something, but um, in terms of like teleoperation, you know, operating a robot at a distance, I mean, those things will have 
applications and some yeah. some like I said, here's the image here. NASA has the Robonaut on the left. Yeah. That's the mm-hmm. they had that on the space station. But this on the right, this is a this is something that just came out like last month. It's called the Neo. It's like a robot in your home and it can be teleoperated using VR. So we're already wow. there in terms of the us operating the the machines. So I mean, give it another yeah. 20 years, I don't see why we wouldn't like Elon says, we probably would figure out a way to load someone's knowledge base onto one of them and if it's not directly someone's consciousness in there, it it would definitely probably appear like that. Like if it was mm-hmm. an AI that was trained on someone's whole knowledge base or the human knowledge right. base, like we're pretty much very close to that already happening. So very interesting uh, target. And I think overall, it's just some really amazing data. Dick, you had that. It starts with the glasses. That, that was just brilliant. Yeah. Yeah, he nailed that sequence there. Um, and, and I think, Nayan, there's a lot of implications to that. There's a lot of deeper conversations to that in terms of um, that, that I'm not going to get into here, but things like reincarnation that we experience now, if we're living in a simulation or a multiverse, and you know, if, if it's just fragments of our consciousness that is just bits of data that can be replicated and impersonated, um, or is it really us? There's been some movies out there, one with Johnny Depp, I forget what it's called, but he became this AI superhuman merger um, and was just playing, at first they thought he was just playing off of copies of his own consciousness that the AI took over, so you just don't know. Dick, I want to check in with you and, and see your thoughts on uh, this project, and I'll get to Daz. I, I surrendered to the methodology. I was like, I, like oh, okay, I don't need to figure this out. The methodology. Would... So I never said virtual reality in my session, I don't think, but I described it, and it was like, when you gave the feedback, I was like, oh, that's what it was. Oh, okay. Now it makes sense. But I never consciously thought that. The question is, is the technology applied to the human or will the human eventually become the technology? Mm-hmm. And that's the question Edward was asking in his session. Yeah. Uh, really interesting work by all of us. That was a good, That this is a good one. Yeah, the division of work was was amazing. You, know, you guys all had different pieces of it, but there was just the right amount of overlap to tie it all together. Really well done, Daz. I want to get your feedback on this. Yeah, it's definitely a, uh, an interesting target. Uh, the Elon Musk connection is interesting because in a couple of weeks ago, on um, I think it was on Joe Rogan, he was asked if he was working on a new phone, and he said, uh, he, "I think his answer was something along the lines of he envisions a future where smart." phones will be replaced by AI powered edged networks mm-hmm. and that within five to six years he, he envisions that um, we won't have a physical device anymore um, yeah. so that's right in line with you know what we got personally I don't think that's going to be here in five to six years I'll be very shocked if any of this gets here in 25 years but yeah if we reach level of ASI you know artificial super intelligence I think we may have a chance of seeing some of this how put off on the Joe Rogan podcast said he was working on a quantum communication device as well. I don't know if that's relevant or not, but that, that all these stuff is a lot of this stuff is in development. So at some point, yeah, I think yeah. That's, well, that's Google trajectory. just did some great research, or so they actually did some great leaks with its quantum computer. Um, hmm. So quantum computers are, you know, we are getting there. I just think yeah. to get to the level that we've just seen and in, in described in twenty five years, I think that would be a reach unless. AI, AI had a massive influence in that, and it would have to be artificial super intelligence rather than you know the the AI that we're seeing today. But if you can entangle, just to divulge for a minute or or dive into this for a minute, if you can entangle a quantum particle in the present time yeah. with a quantum particle of that system in the future time, could that create a bridge and pull everything in? Oh, well, all the information, possibly. But you know, all, when you think about the networks that Dick and everyone was describing there. Right. The amount of information flow, you know, from each person in the in that virtual reality feels like you're talking petabytes of of data from oh, billions yeah. of people. You're going to need, I mean, you know, half of us can't even get a signal on our mobile phone when we want to. If you know what I mean, twenty five right. years down the line to to get petabytes of information on, you know, oh. to million billions of people. I think we need some very serious advancements. That's why I'm saying ASI would have to get involved, but. 
This is how you get the matrix, Daz. That's what this is leading us into for sure. I'm intrigued. I think it's possible. Yeah. I just don't see it within by 2050, as I said, unless uh, artificial intelligence says, hey, you know, here's some big leaps and bounds. Things are supposed to advance exponentially, so time will tell uh, where we can see all that. Edward, I've got one question for you. We don't have to do a deep dive, but does this have that cue ball feel to uh, to it? Oh, wow. I didn't even think of that. Um Maybe to some degree, um, yeah. maybe somewhere in the story, but the the idea of it doesn't doesn't like uh, light up any the the full neurons of my brain. Okay, uh, but I think they're in the same ballpark. Okay, good, good to know. Th Thank this you, one Edward. seemed a, a lot more positive, you know, like the the yeah. the um, the notion of being able to go into this immersive space and become your idea or your invention and to understand it would be mm -hmm. to create it and become it. Yeah. Uh, that's, that was, that's cool. I mean, how well is that? Yeah. How I, it, in that moment, I was like, what would be the, the ultimate way to, ex to experience your invention would be to become it. Yeah, your idea, you know, and yeah, that offers sense. the opportunity to do that, mm -hmm. you know. Sure. And so I think uh, it, on the positive side of things, um, we're going to invent some really cool stuff. Yeah, I don't know yeah. how else to put it, you know. I think it sounds, you know, a little bit scary right now. I mean, you know, technology you don't understand what they say is, is like magic, right? Um but for the people of that time frame, when it comes out, I'm sure it'll just be the next the next thing that's out there because we've got this gradual progression that's going. So for for me, who remembers you know the big tube TVs, and now we're moving into something where like oh I'm going to become a machine. What What are you talking about? Yeah, you know, that, that's that can be a scary thing for sure. But well, from smashing happens. rocks uh, and rubbing sticks together to that, right. you know, it's yeah, come yeah, a long we've way. Come, <laughs> we've come a long way for sure. Come a long way. Yeah. All right, team. Uh, amazing job on this project. Um, for those of you that are watching out there, what's your thoughts? Uh, what's your own interpretation of this? There's lots of ways I think you can do this analysis, but ultimately, I think we are looking at some kind of quantum processes that will impact human consciousness to have some kind of immersive experience in an alternate reality or a virtual reality. Um, so great work by all the viewers. Okay, great sessions, Edward. guys. Awesome. Yeah, stuff. it was really well done. So we have Edward, Naeem, Dick, Daz. The rest of the future forecasting group, I'm Dennis Nappy the second. Thanks for watching. Watch the full debrief at ffgrv.com.